Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. This is Amanullah. You are watching my YouTube channel Dr. Aman's video. Dear friend, today we will discuss Leishmania. In this presentation, first of all, we will introduce you with the four major species of Leishmania. Then we will discuss the transmission and pathogenesis of Leishmania. Then clinical finding and finally we will come to the laboratory diagnosis of Leishmania. Before going to start the lecture, I would like to request you that please subscribe my channel Dr. Aman's video and also try to hit bell icon in order to get notification for my upcoming video. Dear viewer, there are four major species of Leishmania which are Leishmania donovani, Leishmania tropica, Mexicana and Brazilensis or you may read this name is Leishmania donovani complex, Leishmania tropica complex, Mexicana complex and Brazilensis complex. First of all, we will discuss Leishmania donovani because Leishmania donovani, these four species cause diseases in different anatomical sites of the body. So Leishmania donovani actually cause disease or leishmaniasis into the different organ of the body therefore this type of leishmaniasis is known as visceral leishmaniasis because it involved different viseras of the body historically or traditionally it was called kalazar why it was called kalazar we will discuss in upcoming slides sand fly is the vector of leishmania donovani and a variety of mammals such as dog, foxes and rodents are the reservoirs of this pathogen. Only female flies of the sand fly can transmit Leishmania donovani from one host to another host or from reservoir to human being because it requires a protein present in the human blood for the maturation of her eggs. Therefore, only female sand fly feed on the human being. These are the picture or photos of sand fly. Uh, the life cycle of the sand fly we will discuss in this picture starting with the step 1 when an infected sand fly bite on the human being. So they time he, uh, he it inject promestic goat or the stage of Leishmania donovani into the skin of the human being. After that, these promestic goats are phagocytosed by macrophages present in the skin. These promestic goats transform into amestic goat inside the macrophages. And inside the macrophages, this AMST goat has the ability to block the fusion of phagosome and lysosome. So it prevents the formation of phagolysosome. Therefore, this AMST goat results in the killing or dying of the macrophages and these AMST goat are released. And these released AMST goat attacked are you can say are phagocytized by other macrophages and those macrophages are also killed. So AMST goat multiply into the cell including macrophages of the various tissue because we know that macrophages are present in the different reticular endothelial systems of the body like liver, like lungs, like bone marrow. So therefore they can infect the organ of the body or isra of the body who resides or who host the reticular endothelial system. Now after that when an uninfected sand fly bite on the human being so sand fly take a blood meal and during uh, and its blood meal it can inject macrophages infected with MST goat. So these in, in uh, these macrophages infected with MST goat are ingested by this female sand fly, and these MST goats are freed into the gut of the sand fly, and MST goat transform into promest goat into the guts. These promest goats reach to the pharynx, and migrate to the proboscis. Proboscis is the actually organ with the help of with the help of which sand fly bite on the human being and suck the blood. So therefore 
when again the sand fly bite on the human being it inject the promesty god while taking blood meal from the human being and the cycle become complete so the cycle of leishmania donovani is completed into two host one is a human being and the other is sand fly so if you want uh, i will provide the slides and you can read these words now further the pathogenesis in visual leishmaniasis the organ of the reticular endothelial systems which include liver spleen and bone marrow are the mostly most severely affected reticular endothelial system as we know are the immune systems which are composed of macrophages or phagocytic cells and they are host or they are present in these organ of the bodies the 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 infection of the reticular endothelial system results in the reduced bone marrow activity which is coupled with cellular destruction in the spleen because spleen destruct the infected cell as the cells are infected by the mst god so they are destructed in the spleen and also bone marrow activity is reduced which results in anemia leukopenia and thrombocytopenia anemia is the lower level of hemoglobin according to the age and gender while leukopenia is the decrease wbcs and thrombocytopenia is the decrease platelet below normal level so this leads to secondary infection and tendency to bleed because when there when a person is suffering from anemia leukemia and leukopenia and thrombocytopenia therefore his or her immune system is goes down and it is more and he or she is more prone to secondary infection by bacteria and other viruses and also because the low num the low number of platelets can results in bleeding so therefore these types of patient show tendency towards bleeding the striking enlargement of the spleen is due to the combination of proliferation macrophages and sequestered blood cell the spleen of the patient is markedly enlarged because of the proliferation of macrophages in the spleen and the sequestering or destructions of the infected macrophages in the spleen so the combined action of these uh, two activities results in the enlargement or um, pro- mark enlargement of the spleen what would be the symptoms of these problems so symptoms begins with the intermittent fever weakness and weight loss intermittent fever is a fever uh, is a fever with episodes of higher el- or elevated temperature and then again the temperature goes down to the normal then again elevated temperature and then goes down to the normal so this type or this pattern of fever is known as intermittent fever weakness and weight loss these are the initial symptoms of the visceral leishmaniasis and also massive enlargement of the spleen which is a characteristic feature in visceral leishmaniasis hyperpigmentation of the skin can be seen in light skin patient due to this hyperpigmentation the name kalazar was given or black sickness name was given to these disease in a histories the course of the disease run for month to year so it depend on the immune system treatment age and many other factor but the course of the disease can run from month to year and if left untreated it can result in death of the patient initially patient feel reasonably well despite persistent fever but as anemia leukopenia thrombocytopenia become more pronounced so weakness infection and gastrointestinal bleeding start and untreated severe disease is nearly always fatal as a result of secondary infection and bleeding or internal bleeding now leishmania tropica leishmania mexicana and leishmania brasiliensis so leishmania tropica and leishmania mexicana both cause cutaneous leishmaniasis it mean that these two species cause leishmaniasis only in the skin leishmania tropica is found in the old world whereas leishmania lexicana is found only in america because america is known as new world while the other parts of the world is known as old world but in old world cutaneous leishmaniasis are also known as oriental sore or dilly boils daily boils while new world cutaneous leishmaniasis are also known as chikal ulcer or uh, chicken uh, chikal ulcer and base sore these are the, the common name of 
cutaneous leishmaniasis which were given to the lesion of the cutaneous leishmaniasis by different group of people into different parts of the world. There are other different names which are given but they are less common or they are rarely known. So, the most common names which were given in the old world cutaneous leishmaniasis are oriental sore, delhi and delhi boil while these two are the names of the new world cutaneous leishmaniasis. While leishmania brasiliensis cause another types of leishmaniasis which is known as mucocutaneous leishmaniasis or spondia. We will further discuss what do we mean by cutaneous uh, mucocutaneous leishmaniasis. Again, sand fly are the vector for these three organisms and forest rodent and there are the main reservoirs of these three species of leishmania. The life cycle of these parasites is essentially the same as that of leishmania donovani. The lesions are confined to the skin in cutaneous leishmaniasis as I discuss and to the mucous membrane, cartilage and skin in mucous cutaneous leishmaniasis. Cutaneous leishmaniasis only involve the skin of a person while mucocutaneous leishmaniasis are usually occur at the junks of at the junction of mucous membrane, cartilage and skin. You can find these junction on the lip because the, the skin end and the mucus start at the lips and at the junctions of the nostril or the nose. Uh, I, I will show the photos or the pictures in the coming slide. So, the mucocutaneous lesion confined to the junction of the skin and mucous membrane while the cutaneous leishmaniasis lesions are confined only to the skin of a person. A granulomatous response and a necrotic ulcer form at the bite side and the lesion tend to become super infected with bacteria. The, uh, the agrinolomatous response which is, which is a chronic inflammation or chronic inflammatory response. So, a chronic inflammatory response occur against the leishmania. So, in case of both mucocutaneous and cutaneous leishmaniosis, a granulomatous response occur in the lesion which result in a necrotic ulcer. Necrotic ulcer is their type of ulcer where the dead tissue, necrosis are the dead tissue, where the dead tissues are dumped into the ulcer formed at the sides of the lesion. So, therefore, this type of lesion are known as necrotic ulcer. The initial lesion of cutaneous leishmaniasis is a red papule. Papule is a raised bum present at the skin. You, I can show here. This is a papule which is a raised bum present at the skin of a person. So, initial lesion of a cutaneous is a red papule at the bite side of sand fly usually on exposed extremity because sand fly can bite on the on those parts of the body which are exposed like your hand, like your legs, like your face or neck. So, these are the exposed extremities of the body. This enlarge slowly to form multiple satellite nodule that collapse and ulcerate. So, this bump or this small papule enlarge slowly and form different nodules. Nodules are the tissue growth or a tissue bump inside the skin. So, these papule in, in, in results in enlarged nodule and these nodules combine and form a lesion like this. So, this lesion is actually the results of a several nodule you, or you can see like here these are the several nodules and now they have collapsed or they have combined to form a lesion. So, this enlarge slowly to form multiple satellite nodule that collapse and ulcerate. Ulcer is actually an open source is an open sore S O R E is an open sore present on the skin or mucous membrane. There is usually a single lesion that heals spontaneously in patient with a competent immune system because it is an intracellular parasite. So, therefore, it requires a competent immune system, cellular part of a competent immune system. So, usually a single lesion heals spontaneously, but however, in certain individual, if cell mediated immunity is low, so the lesion can spread to involve large area of the skin and contain enormous number of organisms. This is the different lesion of a cutaneous leishmaniasis on the different parts of the body. This type of cutaneous leishmaniasis are also 
in super infected with bacteria because pus is present otherwise in the lesion of cutaneous leishmaniasis you can't see pus because there is uh, because this is an intracellular parasite and a granulomatous response generate against this type of parasite and there is no acute inflammation and pus is the result of acute inflammation in chronic inflammation you can see the necrotic ulcer without pus with dead tissue like you can see this lesion is dumped with a necrotic tissues or necrotic ulcer again this type or here 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 all mucocutaneous leishmaniasis begin with papule at the bite side but then lesion form usually at the mucocutaneous junction of the nose or mouth here i can show you can see this is the junction of this it involves also skin while it involves lesion and cartilage because it has disfigured the cartilage so you can't see here cartilage this is the second mucocutaneous junction because skin end here and here a mucus starts so this is the mucocutaneous junction of the lips this is the mucocutaneous junction of a nose because skin end here and inside the nostrils inside the nostril a mucus starts so this is the mucocutaneous junction of the nostril therefore the mucocutaneous leishmaniasis begin as a papule but the lesion form usually at the mucocutaneous junction of the nose and mouth disfiguring granulomatous ulcerating lesion destroy nasal cartilage but not adjacent bone and these lesion heal slowly these lesion usually result in the disfiguring of the nose or mouth junction but it does not affect the bone of the nose or mouth it only affect the skin mucous membrane and cartilage and it usually result in the disfiguring of the face Diagnosis is usually made by the detecting of MST goat which is present inside the macrophages in a bone marrow, spleen or lymph node biopsy preparation in visceral cases and in skin smear taken lesion in cutaneous or mucocutaneous cases. So both in visceral leishmaniasis and in cutaneous and mucocutaneous leishmaniasis you will detect MST goat inside the macrophages but the the site of the specimen will be different in visceral cutaneous and mucocutaneous leishmaniasis but your target for diagnostic will be same to detect amst goat inside the macrophages the macro the the amst goat is 2 to 5 micrometer in size very small and it contain a nucleus which is usually off the center it mean that it is it is a little aside from the center toward the wall here and you can see a parabasal body which is known as kinetoplast and they can easily be seen in a ginza stain here these are the amst goat it is a nucleus and a small cytoplasm so it is usually 2 to 5 micrometer in size it is the uh, amst goat in ginza stain under 100 x lens there are other methods which can be used for the diagnosis of leishmania which include pcr for the diagnosis of nucleic acid and also you can use immunological or serological technique for the detections of antibodies against leishmania or leishmania antigen dear viewer i hope you will enjoy this video and you would find as a peaceful information thank you so much if you have any question or suggestion you can write me at forum talvi at the rate of hotmail.com or you can write me in comment under descriptions thank you so much for watching my youtube channel free amanillah